Grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, some of you may not know that I, uh, I was a baseball player in college. I was a better baseball player than I was a student. Uh, but uh, I went to a little school called Muhlenberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I'm uh, sure that by now I am not remembered by many people at all. I am, my name does not grace the Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, but let me just tell you, there is a, an interesting character who is in the uh, College Hall of Fame. Uh, it's, it's this man. Uh, so Wil Wilson B. Hendricks, Jr., who is uh, better known as Willie. Uh, Willie, uh, I don't know, that's the only picture I could see of him, uh, uh, black and white, but he had strawberry blonde hair. He was about 5'6 or 5'7, real stout guy. He was in his mid-40s when I knew him. He would be about 75 years old to, if, if he were still alive today. But he was this spirited, wonderful man uh, who we all loved. He, he had some sort of cognitive disability. We never knew what it was. It didn't matter. Willie was great at his job. He was a force. He was a big presence around the campus. He was the equipment manager for the athletic department. He was very likable, he was loud, he was boisterous, he was the kind of person who was unafraid to express his opinion, and sometimes he would shout in frustration, and you could hear him halfway across campus, it seemed like. But each day, the same pattern for all of us was the same. We would go to Willie's window, he knew your size, he would give you your standard issue practice gear, which was, a, was really fancy. Uh, it was all gray, every day all gray. Not, no logo, just all gray, every day. But the end of practice, you returned it to be cleaned. And if you, uh, if, if you followed the way Willie liked it, you would have showered, cleaned up, and be out of there in about two minutes. <laughs> if you lingered, his volume would go louder and louder, and he would tell you it's time to be done. But he was emotional. He'd get really irritated with you if you got your uniform too dirty. And I used to slide head first. <laughs> and all spring, I kind of had gaping wounds in my legs from sliding. And uh, so I was always getting blood on my uniform. And he'd be like, you're killing me. And he would then clean it for me. I'd sometimes ask him for a different undershirt, I kind of like this one that had a tighter arm, and he'd be like, why can't you just take what I give you? He'd give you a hard time. You'd end up kind of laughing at some of his outbursts and his side heckling of you, but I realized in looking back, I kind of look forward to seeing him every day. Every season for every team, we all went to Willie. Day in and day out, he handed out the equipment. He handed out the gear we needed for the field, where the action was going to take place. Willie equipped us. His work helped us, and it was this repetitive act over and over, over and over and over again that inspired me. And I realized time and time again, I'd be out in the middle of an inning, look over, and Willie was the one cheering us on because he was always our biggest fan. I've long since forgotten the names of almost every professor I ever had. Uh, maybe that's a character flaw in me. But I'll never forget Willie. Uh, in 2004, Willie died in a car accident. And it was at his death we learned a little bit more about him. I realized he was a lifelong Lutheran. He served as the usher and greeter at his church every single Sunday first person you would see every single week at his church welcoming you. For 45 years, he took the uh, Sunday school attendance. He helped at vacation Bible school. He uh, helped with the church property, and uh, every week it was his responsibility to record the, the sermon on uh, the service on tape. He would then duplicate those things and then take them out to the shut-ins of the church every single week so they knew they were not forgotten and so that they could be fed as well. It seems that to me, Willie, the equipment manager, was actually equipped as a minister and a servant of Jesus. All that being said, Willie 
reminds us, I think, of the purpose of the church in every age, which is to continually equip people for their daily ministry. Like I went to Willie's window day in and day out, over and over and over again, we come to the church over and over again to be taught, to be inspired, to remember the things we need to do to make a godly difference in this world. It's an ongoing distribution is what's an important thing to remember, the important image to remember. It's not something we hand you, you got everything all at once. It's ongoing. We uh, get new tools, we get reminders, we get ways to, to sharpen our skills at extending love and mercy. And we come, we realize, to cheer each other on and encourage each other for the work of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God meaning the world as it's supposed to be. You and I are sent out to demonstrate the way the world should be lived. Think briefly about the meaning of equip. Equip means to furnish for service. It means to make ready. It means to prepare someone. Equipping is something we do for other people. It's to help them. And when you and I, as the people of God, when we set our hearts and minds and we put our time and our talent and our resources toward equipping people to serve in Jesus' world, you realize what we're doing is we're tapping into something very sacred and very, very important that brings out the very, very best in ourselves and the very best in the church community. At the same time, I think it's very, very important to acknowledge there's a lot of reverse equipping that goes on that's counter to the work of the kingdom. So many people are taught, they're equipped to be consumers. And they're taught that satisfaction comes from materialism. Sometimes people are equipped to look out for themselves, and they're taught that their views are all you need to listen to, and you filter out any other competing voices. Sometimes people are equipped to be skeptical and keep a distance from others, and they're taught that their vision for humanity is that some are superior and a lot of other people are deemed inferior. All around us, people are being equipped to be angry, and cynical. But you realize these are forces at play that we just need to rise above. We need to know they're there, we know they're there, but we need to do something better than that. Because those things, you realize that I've just mentioned, tap into parts of us that keep us from really being fully human, being the people God wants us to be. When the church is at its very, very best, it's doing the exact opposite of what I just mentioned. When we're do, we are helping people tap into the very best of who they are, it's powerful and it's hopeful, and we become an alternative witness in this world. When we gather, we're always distributing gifts to be shared in this world. And I like to think that we're giving new lenses to look at the world. Where our confirmation students, one of their favorite videos is this one where people are given different lenses and it just changes their perspective. You and I, when we gather for worship, when we take communion, we're given new lenses to look at this world. And what we're given is a serve first mentality. We are quick then to listen and extend care. We begin to look for the outcast, the downtrodden, the ostracized. We learn that a fulfilling life is not about consuming, it's about being a generous witness. We're about being hopeful, and about being a peacemaker and helping reconcile differences. But we learn to work for the common good. You know, I, I give thanks for the many, many saints in my life who have enriched it, Sunday school teachers along the way. I know every single one of you could give thanks for someone who has inspired you on your faith journey or who continues to inspire you. This church is all about equipping, and it has been for a long time since Pastor Dan began his ministry here. But you realize Dan was equipped by others, and we continue that. Long after I'm here, I fully believe this church will continue to be equipping other people to serve in daily life. Uh, we are we'll be training new Stephen ministers this coming year who will be trained to listen, to help people in need. I, you know, we've been on a couple mission trips this summer, and what is so, so fascinating about being with young kids is you realize a lot of them were these kids who have, were uh, up here, for, were uh, in the kids' sermon, you know, five, ten years ago, and to see how far 
they've grown and matured and how they're going to make a difference. Some of them will be uh, leaders this week in Vacation Bible School, and they'll take further steps in their Christian growth and development. But you all are people who provide great encouragement for them. But uh, I said to Pastor Kate today, I had no clue how I was going to end this sermon today. But one of the things I do want you to think about, each of you probably can name someone different here at the church who inspires you, who encourages you, who sparks you on the faith journey. I mentioned Willie today as someone who ultimately inspired me on the journey. Spend some time this week giving thanks for those in the past and the present who uh, have inspired you and realize your name is probably being called out by others as well. Amen.